Hi, this is Real World Audio and now I'm taking a little break from cleaning the engine parts and I'm going to share something really special with you and uh, this is going to be something uh, unique. Of course, I think many of you are very familiar with relatively lower efficiency loudspeakers and uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, or heard once or twice in your life loudspeakers which are of ultra high efficiency and perhaps you had occasions to hear them and but usually when it happens when we hear a low efficiency system or we have it at home in most cases and when you hear a high efficiency one at a friend's place or at a showroom or whatnot, then uh, it's in a very different room, very different uh, music system and often playing quite different music. So there's really no basis to compare the two experiences together. And all, even if you have like a relatively benign uh, comparison, in most cases, uh, you hear them with an amplifier in a system which prefers one or the other. And now I'm going to share my experience of comparing these two. And it's not just a brief comparison that, that people usually give you on the internet. You hear a review that, oh, I, I heard this loudspeaker for an hour or a week or something like that. But I've been living with these two speakers for many, many years. And luckily, the amplifier that I'm driving them with, both of these speakers absolutely love this amplifier. So I'm giving both of them the best amplifier that they just love. Maybe there's an amplifier that's even better for them. Probably there is. But <laughs> this baby just drives the Mirage absolutely beautifully. So, for example, uh, one of the best violin reproductions I ever heard from a stereo system came from the Ampex driving the Mirage. And that, that is the strength of these Mirages, the beautiful tone. <sighs> okay, so here we go. So as you guys know, I've had the Mirages for many, many, many years and uh, I have a couple of videos on how I uh, rebuild their crossover and how I tweak them and they, uh, in this shape, tweaked and, uh, and uh, properly modified according to my buddy Irvin, uh, they are comparable to what you can get today for $10,000, that type of loudspeakers. And we are talking about a 20 plus year old uh, loudspeaker design. So that kind of shows that uh, guys, even though like decades go by in the loudspeaker world, there is not really that much change. So the only change is that when you have an old pair of loudspeakers, the parts, the capacitors in it, they over the decade or two, they go kaput and you need to replace them. And when you replace them with same quality capacitors they put in modern loudspeakers, they do compare. So your 20-year-old, 30-year-old loudspeaker, if you bring the crossover to modern standards, it, that loudspeaker will stand against modern loudspeakers on an equal footing. And now, Let's have a look at that. So these guys have an efficiency of 89 dB per watt meter. So that's a published rating. So we are talking about 89. That's uh, a pretty good uh, efficiency with uh, today's standards. Uh, so if most of you have loudspeakers which are in that range or probably a few dB lower than that. So it's kind of considered on the a good higher range of lower efficiency loudspeakers. And, and the voice of Lancelot, these are my speakers, I designed and built them. 
I do not have measurements for them because I never measure them and I don't have measurements from anyone else because these are the only ones in the world but I estimate them, the efficiency and I use the tweeter, tweeter? the compression driver's efficiency as the basis for the uh, efficiency calculations and I estimate them to be at 102 dB per watt meter and now these are honest uh, efficiency and sensitivity ratings because what you get nowadays for many uh, loudspeakers uh, is like a couple dBs higher than the actual rating so about 50% or more loudspeakers on the market you can easily subtract 3 to 6 dB from the rating that they come published with. So many of the loudspeakers like that are advertised as 96 dB efficient. If they are 89 or 90, you are lucky. However, these guys, the Mirage is true 89 dB per watt meter because they were made in an era where people put honest measurements on their spec, she spec sheets, on their specifications. And there we go. So, what happened is that I had this experience at Christmas time. So basically I loaned my uh, Mirages to a friend of mine and he was using them for, for about half a year or so and then they returned home last fall around October or so. And then uh, during the winter break I put them into my system. And what I did is I was uh, watching the Cowboy Bebop new series on Netflix. And I've been watching them using the high efficiency system. And uh, I just paused the, the play and I switched over to the Mirage. And my volume control units, it has dB count in it. So actually I could count the exact dB difference to make the dialogue as loud as it was with the high efficiency speakers. And, uh, and also I had increased the volume with a certain amount of dB and then the dialogue became the same volume and the apparent peak dynamics it did not get the same as, as it was be before. So when there was a, a boom or something like that, or something that required like a big change in the amplitude of the sound, it, it still has not reached what the uh, efficient speakers did. But guys, the difference on paper between these two is 102 minus 89 dB. So how much that should be? It's, it's 13 dB, right? So logic dictates that on the volume control, I needed to add 13 dB to reach the same volume. But that was not the case. I had to add 17 dB. And even with that, uh, the, the vocals were, I mean, when, when there was a dialogue on the screen, that was about the same volume, but the dynamics was still not as big. So when there was a, like a spaceship flying or something like that, it, it still sounded like compressed and, and not, not as, uh, as dynamic, as big as with the bigger speakers. So what on earth is going on? Because... Uh, the difference is 13 dB, but I had to crank the volume up by 17 dB to get the same apparent volume as I did. So there's some difference on paper, but in the real world, the experienced uh, difference can be even bigger than that. And that's a little bit mind-blowing. And I had, have to add that uh, over time, 
uh, as uh, as the mirage is uh, uh, warmed up, they become uh, quite a bit more full full blooded and lively. And uh, but still, that seventeen dB difference was still holding. Um, now comes the really crazy bit. Like three days later, I flipped them back. So now I was listening again to the voice of Lancelot. And guys, guess what? How much I needed to turn the volume down to have a feel to get the same uh, amount of volume as I did with the Mirage. I had to turn it down by 5 dB. So now there is something really weird going on, right? Because uh, when you change from one to the other, uh, the, the dB steps uh, are totally different, totally out of whack. And, uh, and it does not really make sense. Because actually uh, the ear, how we hear the loudness, how we hear dynamics is something uh, quite complex and and as i have experienced we cannot simply translate the uh, db per watt meter figure into uh, a specific increase in apparent loudness or volume and there's something that explains this difference is that uh, the perception of compressed music material is quite uh, addictive. So, so what happened is that before I loaned my Mirages, uh, right after I built the, the Voice of Lancelot, I've been like flipping back and forth and back and forth with other speakers too and comparing the sound. And, uh, and when, when I was switching from one to the other, uh, and as I went with lowest efficiency, like with book shafts, and then the uh, mirages, and then the big ones, the, the apparent loudness difference between them uh, was not that much. And that's because as you drop down in efficiency, if you use that, if you listen to that all the time, then your ears calibrate to that loudness perception. And, um, and that's a, a perception because the bass is the loudest bit of the music or, or the signal. And, and, and when you compress it, then it, it kind of becomes, it takes over and it becomes the main energy part of the spectrum. So like we have the big bass and then the higher frequencies come, go lower. And then of course at the very high frequencies they, they can come up in uh, amplitude quite a bit. But because of the compression, the dynamic compression of lower efficiency speakers, the bass in comparison to an ultra high efficient sound will sound uh, very much, uh, I would say, very fat and, and very uh, heavy. So, for example, when I was listening to that Cowboy Bebop and other things and where there are like gunshots, uh, a gunshot in real life is, is something very dynamic and extremely loud and something very fast. And I've been recently uh, to the archery range and next to the archery range, there is the shooting range here at the Coco Head range. And guys, like uh, guns and rifles shooting, that is extremely bloody loud, but it's super duper fast. And when I listen to gunshots, like with the, through the ultra efficient speakers, they are rendered something like that. They cannot be rendered exactly like a live gunshot because the live gunshot is over 140 dB loud 
and as you notice everyone in the shooting range is wearing ear protection if you don't want to go deaf because uh, you shoot a full a couple rounds without ear protection and then you will fear the severe consequences next day after that and and when they are recording gunshots for movies they put severe compression at least 60 70 80 db compression so that it can fit into a uh, material i mean into a recording and can be played back by an average system and and when it's played back by the voice it still resembles a gunshot in in a, in in so much that it is something that happens really fast really explosive and very dynamic it, it really covers the entire dynamic range and when i hear it with the mirage this has extra 13 db dynamic compression then instead of that freshness of the shot it becomes a heavy muddy deep uh, something which is really really overbearing so so one of the things that i experienced was not just uh, the change in the average volume but that the sound and all the sound effects in the movie with the lower efficiency loudspeaker became extremely offensive and very hard to bear and and uh, tiring the ear a lot even though i was listening to them quieter than i was listening to with the voice of lancelot but over three days my ears calibrated themselves to hearing that compressed bass and when i changed back to the ultra efficient speakers first it seemed as if the bass thinned out and and my ears had to uh, get used to again of hearing uh, bass that it's not uh, held down by uh, compressed dynamics and uh, and the bass of these guys goes way 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 deeper than the mirage so so the mirage uh, they are like I think minus three or minus minus three dB at thirty hertz, and and my guys minus three dB. It's it's just my calculation. My in room minus three dB point is around eighteen hertz, and my minus six dB point in room is uh, fourteen hertz, and and then really uh, it can be fat. So, for example, when I was watching The Expanse, and in The Expanse it's about spaceships and uh, space shuttles and space station. So when they, they are in a space, uh, they, their ship, and they dock with the space station, it, it really feels as if uh, I am on the space station and I can feel the, the, those subtle, very deep vibrations that uh, as if as if my room was part of the space space shuttle it's it's really really crazy and when they have like a rocket burn the, the sound of the rocket burning is like a like a real rocket it gives you that feeling and that adrenaline rush and when you listen to that through the mirage then it gives you that type of feel that you get when you have like a subwoofer and then you crank it up and um so this is something, a perspective, that you never get reported back to you because people uh, do not spend years living with both low and high uh, efficiency technology and they don't get the chance to compare them in an equal footing. So I hope that this little experience helped everyone to orient better in the world of high and ultra high efficient loudspeakers have a wonderful day please share your comments and experiences bye bye